Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is David Clayson, and today we're talking about how we need to still be diving into the Old Testament, even though uh, we're living under the New Covenant, which is which is revealed in the New Testament. Um, yesterday, I was presenting Right Now Media to our church, and for those that don't know, it's this company that brings Bible studies, devotionals, and things like that together. Um, and churches can pay a monthly or yearly subscription to this, and when they do that, all their congregation members can each make an account for free and and access those Bible studies and things like that. So our church, we got that subscription, and I was presenting it to the congregation. And on there, I noticed that there's some teachers, evangelists, uh, pastors that have their material on there, that, and they they have questionable theology. And so I had to do a little disclaimer on it, and let them know, hey, not everything on here is sound in theology. So again, always go refer back to the Bible in those situations. And here's the example of Andy Stanley, who back in 2018... Um, he did this sermon on how the church needs to become unhitched from the Old Testament. The reason he did this is because when people read the Law of Moses in the Old Testament, they have trouble connecting that with the New Covenant that we're living under right now, under through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And it just confuses them. And so that got me thinking about this, how we need to continue diving into the Old Testament. And the reason for that is because without the Old Testament, you're only getting a partial revelation of who God is. You have Jesus and the Holy Spirit in the New Testament that are revealed, even though the Spirit of the Lord uh, fell on people in the Old Testament as well. But um, in the Old Testament, you also get a big revelation of who, who God the Father is. Um, now, I know that there are people who don't like reading the Old Testament because they can't reconcile Jesus, this the that revelation of God in the New Testament, who was loving, told people to love their neighbors, told them to not steal from people, told them to... Uh, do all these things that are deemed good in our eyes, um, as well as doing all this miraculous stuff and then sacrificing his own life for us. People like that revelation of God. And then you got the Holy Spirit later who comes. He's here to counsel us. He's here to guide us in our relationship with God. They like that revelation of God as well. But then you go to the Old Testament and you have God the Father. You have Yahweh. He's there. Um... And he is a just God. And people on earth, we get peaks of Jesus, or excuse me, of God the Father's wrath um, when people sin and disobey him. First, I think the major one is the flood. There's so much evil in the world, and so the world faced God's wrath there, or his justice, if you want to put it that way, uh, by sending a flood to the earth. I think the next biggest one that people get caught up on is Israel going into the promised land, and God uses them to... To wipe out the people's groups in the promised land. Um, and people struggle with that. And they read those things and they're like, what happened to the loving God? <laughs> what happened to the God that uh, died on the cross for us? I don't like this this version of God, even though it's not a version of God. It's just a, a bit, another revelation of who he is. And so that is why it's important for us to read the Old Testament. Because really, without understanding that God is a just God who, 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 you know, there's a wrath of God as well. Without understanding that, you won't completely understand how much he loves you because he's provided a way out from his wrath through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And so you can't truly appreciate the love that you receive from God unless you realize that God is a vengeful, just, and a vengeful and just God who the wrath of God will fall on anybody that does not turn to Jesus Christ. And we do we do get a couple clues about this in the New Testament there. You know, Matthew 5, 17 through 19 says, Don't be afraid of, of man who can hurt the body. Be afraid of God who can hurt the body and the soul. And then you have another clue, like in John chapter 3, verse 36, it says in NIV version here, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. For God's wrath remains on them. So you have verses like that. And then even further, you have Jesus, the Son of God, quoting from the Old Testament there, quoting from Old Testament Scripture. In Luke 4, 17-21, Jesus quotes from Isaiah. Um, and then in Matthew 10, 28, he's not quoting there, but he says, He did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. Jesus the Sermon on the Mount there. And so it's important for us to continue to study the Old Testament to understand what Jesus is talking about there, but to understand why there is a necessity for this new covenant through the sacrifice of Jesus. 
Uh, another quick point I want to make here is that the Old Testament, that was humanity getting a chance to have a healthy relationship with God themselves under their own strength, under their own will. That's why the law of Moses there, uh, the 600 plus laws that were given, that was humanity, that was Israel given a chance, hey, if you want to be right with God, here's what you got to do. And Israel failed over and over and over again. And that gives us the example that we cannot stay right with God in a proper relationship with him because of our sinful nature. Um, um, and so Jesus came. And so again, that just helps you appreciate God's love even more because he sends his son so that we can overcome that sinful nature and be in a proper relationship with him because that's how much he loves us. But those that don't turn to Jesus will face the wrath of God. And again, we get peaks of that in the Old Testament. I think some other examples there are like Korah, who rebelled against Aaron and Moses. Um, Jesus, excuse me, not Jesus, God the Father, Yahweh. Um, he has the earth open and swallow up Korah and his family and all their possessions. And then Israel, they're wandering in the wilderness there. And they're complaining. They don't. They lose faith in God and Moses and Aaron. So God sends these snakes to come in and, and wipe out a lot of the Israelites there. Um, um, and just, we get so many different peaks at God's wrath there. Um, and if you truly want to know who God is, you got to read both the Old and New Testament. Because both of those are a full revelation of who he is. And so we, he's a loving God. He's a God that wants to guide you. Um, like we see in the New Testament with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But he's also a jealous God. He's a God that wants you to be obedient to his will, to his commands. Um, and if that doesn't happen, he has to carry out justice. And people will face the wrath of God because of that. And we see that in the Old Testament. So both books are still um, appropriate for us today here in this year. Whatever this year you're watching this video uh, is at. Might be a few da few years down the road. Right now it's 2022. But it's still rele relevant today. Um, and it really helps you have an appreciation for God's love when you realize what you're escaping, when, which is his, his wrath, because of your disobedience to him. So yeah. Yeah, I just want to put that out there for you. Um, so make sure you're, still, you're diving into all the Bible, not just the New Testament, Old Testament too, and be studying it. With that said, guys, that's all. That's what I got to say on that. Just wanted to share that with you. Um, but have a blessed day, and we will catch you in the next one.